working Televised lies and frequencies of confusion We can't win for losing I grip on reality Infatuated with temporal things we see That pass away with the user Eventually, look beneath the surface Cause we're running out of time Bloods, earthquakes, fires, droughts and wars AIDS, Ebola, West Nile, Hepatitis and SARS Why no man take these things to heart? Cause the kings of the earth are mad And no, not peace Truth falls in the streets Cause no one seeks beyond the surface so bold, read about the God of Israel and the people he chose, all that glitters ain't gold, look deep beneath the surface, follow the light, it's worth it, it leads to something, Yahweh of hosts is his name, the source of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. The Forming of the Unions, narrated by Obadiah and Eliel ben Yisrael. We are living today in what the scriptures refer to as the latter days. As biblical prophecies fulfill right before our eyes, it is truly amazing to say the least. As we witness the forming of the unions and the rising in strength of the euro, we can begin to grasp what John the Revelator spoke of in chapter 13 of Revelations beginning at verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. According to recent stock market reports, the dollar is weakening in value considerably against other currencies. During the year 2000, the dollar fell more than 10% against the euro. In addition to that, the dollar has declined 24% against the European currency during the past two years. The euro first began trading on the market eight years ago in the year 2000. Since then, it has been steadily growing in strength and has become a major force to be reckoned with. On the international scene, this union of over 20 European nations is following its predestined course down to the T. Observe a little deeper and you will see the forming of the unions. Held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the African Union Summit boasts of a membership of over 52 states. Following suit behind them, we witness the emergence of the Asian Union. For the first time, China's manpower and low costs are united with the money and technology of Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. These unions are first brought about under the guise of trade agreements. Upon entering a trade agreement, member countries are bound to abide by union laws. Next, a currency is introduced by the union. Finally, a parliament established by the union 
votes on new laws which supersede those individual countries' laws. Unannounced to the American public, as well as unregulated by Congress, in 2005, the United States, Canada, and Mexico entered into an arrangement which would merge the three countries into one large entity known as the North American Union. Super NAFTA highways will be constructed to interlink the countries with all total. states must comply with the Real ID Act as a country is forced to comply with a union constitution. The North American Union, as well as the emerging Asian Union and African Union, all follows the model of the EU. This is because she is the head. What many today dub the New World Order is really not new at all. The wise preacher tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It has been already of old time which was before us. Even a brief study of world history will reveal that ancient empires ruled with the whole world as their subjects. From the pharaohs of Egypt to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the Medo-Persian Empire followed by Alexander the Great with the Greek Empire, and lastly the Roman Empire. It is noteworthy that during the rule of the Caesars, a tax was imposed upon the whole known world. In 476 AD, the Roman Empire fell and its powers were divided. Now, in these latter days, we are witnessing the revival of the Holy Roman Empire under the band of the European Union. John the Revelator spoke vividly of this unified conglomerate beast in the book of Revelation chapter 13 beginning at verse 3. It states, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Yahweh to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The Europeans or Euro Gentiles are the cultural extensions of ancient Rome. These private families along with secret organizations carry the same ideologies as the men of old who said in their heart, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Genesis chapter 11 verse 4 Careful attention is given to this fourth beast or empire which would rule. The prophet Daniel described his visions of this beast in chapter 7 verses 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Biblical prophecy has warned long in advance of a time that should come when men would neither be able to buy, sell, or trade save they had the mark 
or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelations 13 verse 17 In these days and times, modern technology has created a new electronic world which has no borders. But marvel not, my people, for we are living in the times of the Gentiles, and we must fulfill the book. Though hard for many to understand, it is but a small handful of men pulling the strings behind the curtain. These globalists represent the true investment class of society. Organizations such as the Bilderbergs and the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, Skull and Bones, just to name a few, all work in unison to accomplish their goal, world domination. The forming of the unions truly will allow the kings of the earth to divide the world for gain. Behind the corporate veil, alliances such as NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and the Security and Prosperity Partnership paved the way. In Germany, 1994, speaking on behalf of the ruling party's most dominant ancient European country, Europe's foreign policy spokesman, Chancellor Kohl's, expressed plainly the goals of the EU. One flag, one anthem, one currency, and one government. The constitution, which was drafted by the European Union's parliament, consists of a system of law known as corpus juris, which is translated as corporate justice. There is no habeas corpus, meaning you can be detained without charges being brought up upon you for up to nine months. There is no presumption of innocence, neither jury trials, only military-style tribunals. Due to having the largest population of all member countries, Germany and France will draw the most power in the EU, both with bloody track records behind them. The psalmist Dawid gave insight on these issues in chapter 2 of Psalms, beginning at verse 1. It states, Why do the heathens rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cards from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Yahweh has said unto me, You are my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Yahweh chooses the kings which bear rule upon earth. Though man may think in his heart that he is doing something, truly Yahweh is the host of the battle. Rome is reforming under the European Union's Federation of Nations, which will be led by the Vatican's system of paganism and blasphemy and mobilized by the feet of the bear or Russia. The Messiah Yahshua told us to watch for signs. Truly in these latter days, the signs of the times are upon us. Though they establish laws to govern themselves, 
they are in direct contradiction to the laws, statutes, and judgments given by Yahweh the Most High. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The prophet Isaiah exhorted us in chapter 2, starting at verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come you and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more O house of Jacob come you and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. A union is nothing new. Let's look at the definition of a union. A union, growing together of nations, states, and political groups. Now let's go back in time in Genesis 11, 1 through 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there and they said one to another go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth and Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because Yahweh did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Even then a form of union was taking place, grouping together, becoming one. Another word to look at is confederate, Confederate means to unite by persons, groups, or nations. Not all unions or grouping together is of the good of Yah. The first unification movement is known as the International Pan-European Union, which started by Count Richard Cardenhoff Kalegi in 1923. But his hopeful beginnings were smashed in the rise of the dictatorship of Hitler. After Count Richard Cardenhoof's death in 1973, Europe began to split, unification stagnated, and communism gained ground. The Pan-European Union took a turn into a broad and popular movement by its elected president in 1986, called Otto von Habsburg. Otto von Habsburg believed firmly on the expansion of the European Union from the beginning. Before the EU became known as the European Union, it was known as the European Economic Community, formed by the Treaty of Rome on March 25, 1957, and came into force by the 1st of January, 1958. The signatures came from six European countries, which are France, West Germany, Belgium, Italy, the Netherlands and Luxembourg, which are all part of Western Europe. As time passed, the members of the European Union grew in size and power. 
the size of the European Union has reached to the amount of 27 member states, which are Australia, Belgium, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, the Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Some of those member states agreed on the monetary union, which is the agreement of using only one currency between them. In 1999, the European Union introduced a common currency called the Euro. It has already been adopted by 15 member states, which are Australia, Belgium, Cyprus, Finland, France, and Germany, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Malta, the Netherlands, Portugal, Slovenia, and Spain. Even though the euro was introduced in 1999, the physical coins and banknotes were launched on January the 1st of 2002. The euro is the currency with the highest combined value of cash in circulation in the world, having surpassed the United States dollar. If you check the world's GDP, which is the gross domestic product made by total consumer, investments, and government spending, plus the value of exports, minus the value of imports made by a country in the world, you can see that the EU is in the lead of gross income. It is documented that by adopting the euro as your state currency, you can save on the exchange cost of money between states. Before the euro, the cost of exchanging currencies was high, estimated at 20 to 25 billions of dollars annually in the European Union. Those costs have disappeared within the euro, area where all payments and invoices are now in euro. In time past, prophecies have always been warning us about the rise and fall of kingdoms on the earth. But who hath believed our report, and whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? The euro is part of the New World Order, cons- where a powerful secretive group would eventually try to replace sovereign state and other checks and balances in the world power struggles. Historical and current events are seen as steps as an ongoing plot to rule the world primarily through a combination of political finance, social engineering, mind control, and fear-based propaganda. As the change for currency is becoming more and more global, it is prophesied that the world leader will cause other nations to worship this beast. Revelations 13, 12 through 17. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. 
Revelations 13, verse 1 through 5. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty-two months, three and a half years. Daniel 7, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. We are still living in the fourth kingdom, which is Roman rule. Although Rome fell in 476 AD, some say Rome fell because it was split into an eastern and western empire ruled by separate emperors. But the head that was wounded to death shall be healed. This will be the revival of the Roman Empire, the European Union, the New World Order, Confederacy, Prophecy, all things shall come to pass. Revelations 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, 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 the number of a man. The title of the Pope is Vicarious Philidae which adds up to 666 in Roman numerals. Daniel 11, verse 36 through 39. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, which is the military, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most stronghold with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. Revelations 14, 12 through 13. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim, God, and the faith of Yahshua, the Anointed One. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Adonai, Yahshua, from henceforth. Yes, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Lucifer the master deceiver is the only reason why the world's condition is progressively getting worse and worse. However, because man cannot physically see Lucifer, consequently, man forgets and or questions his existence. Most people do not understand Lucifer's evil demonic forces which build up, tear down, and rule empires. In fact, this includes the forming and setting up of all the governmental systems in the world. Is this the real reason why man has always desired to rule the whole world? Chiefly because there is an adversary called Satan 
guiding and using man's adversarial ways to further his adversarial plays. Is this the reason why the League of Nations became the United Nations, which is absolutely the forerunner to a one world government? If you do not think so, then explain why is there an international government called the United Nations? Explain why there is an international court and an international police and military. Why is there an international governmental agreement with international responsibility for economic, social, cultural, educational, health, and other related fields? This international governmental agreement is the United Nations Constitution called the UN Charter. Maybe this is the reason why there is a constant talk of a new world order. Richard Perlee, who was a chairman of Bush Jr.'s Defense Policy Board, stated, What will die is the fantasy of the UN as the foundation of a new world order. The liberal conceit of safety through international law administered by international institutions. If there isn't a plan for a new world order, then why would Mr. Perley make this statement? This quote confirms that there is an international agenda which exceeds the agenda of individual countries. When examining the UN Charter carefully, one will find out that the Constitution of the United States and the UN Charter cannot coexist. Maybe this is why the Constitution of America is being destroyed. However, Mr. Perlee seems to believe that America would not be a part of this new world order. And he is exactly right because America, the daughter of Babylon, would not willingly give her power to no one. As a result of this, America must be destroyed for this one world system to completely be set in place. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 through 14, America is introduced as the strange land, whereby Abraham's seed will be afflicted for 400 years, and also this same nation that afflicted Abraham's seed for 400 years would be judged. All the events that are happening in America today are a part of her judgment, but as quiet as it is kept, Isaiah 13 and 47, Jeremiah 50 and 51, and Revelation 18 describes her destruction in detail. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Consider this, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets of the Bible knew about Jerusalem, Egypt, Iraq, also called Babylon, Persia, now called Iran, Europe, and Asia. These were lands that they were all familiar with at one time or another, but not one of them traveled to or ever saw America making America the strange land that Abraham's seed would sojourn in for 400 years. Remember, Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Now, the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So don't even try to say that the 400-year captivity of the children of Israel happened when they were in Egypt. Because number one, Egypt was not a strange land to any of them. And number two, the children of Israel were slaves for only the last 80 to 100 years of their Egyptian captivity. And number three, God would have to make a 30 year mistake. And frankly, Yahweh never makes mistakes. This is why in Exodus chapter one, verse nine through 11 states, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. This happened after a king rose up which knew not Joseph. 
As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, Stephen made mention of the same 400-year captivity which Abraham spoke of, and at this time, it still had not taken place. What you see happening is America's destruction is near, and this is why there is so much terror from within. Like Jeremiah 50 and 46 states, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. All the things that are happening today in America are leading up to this piece of scripture. Some people can see this, and some cannot. But the scary part is that most people forget that Yahweh is using Satan to bring wrath upon the earth. Satan, the master deceiver, is controlling all the governments of the world. Lucifer's agenda is being carried out. It is known that members of secret societies like Skull and Bones, the Illuminati, and Freemasonry worship Satan, willingly in most cases. And these are the very people he uses to rule his governmental kingdom on the earth. According to John 14 and 30, Lucifer is called the prince of this world. Could this be the reason why he tempted the Messiah in Matthew 4 with the riches of this world? In Matthew chapter 4 verse 9 and 10, the King James Version of the Bible states, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou fall down and worship me. Is it possible for the leaders of this world who frequently kill, who purposely starve, who conquer and destroy the earth and mankind, could they have bowed down to Lucifer in exchange for their riches, position, and their powers? Have they bowed down to Satan in return for his riches and for the glory of his kingdom? Just like the Messiah said, you shall know them by their fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Matthew chapter 7 verse 18. Look at the fruit of the world. Isn't America corrupt? Could this be the reason why America is no longer America? Could this be the reason why America is moving from a democracy to a more socialistic government? However, this is supposed to be a country that is for the people and by the people. Now, America seems to be a country that is for the corporations and by the corporations. Isn't this a form of fascism? As a matter of fact, this tyranny form of government helps explain why the so-called Negroes' oppression in this country is spreading throughout the entire nation. This is why Revelation chapter 13 and 10 states, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Truly, America bought and continues to enslave the Hebrew Israelites in her country today. But people are soon to forget what Yahweh said. For he that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of my eye. Zechariah 2 and verse 7. Think not that Yahweh, the God of the Hebrews, which happens to be these so-called Negroes here in America, will not shake his hand upon them? Now, all of a sudden, the Euro Gentiles in America are enslaving their own people, while Lucifer is using their leaders to destroy America with terror from within. So what happened to a country who boasted of being land of the free and home of the brave? Is America a country of liberty and justice for all, or a country being assembled and headed for a fall? Maybe this is why the leaders of America have formed an allegiance with secret organizations that care not at all for her national sovereignty, but care only to further the plan of their God, Lucifer, for their individual gain. Remember Luke chapter 4 and verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. 
since the Messiah did not call him a liar after he made this statement, maybe, just maybe, it is because the prince of this earth, Lucifer, can give his riches to whomsoever he will. This document is designed to give enlightenment on the aforementioned issues, as well as give the real answer and solution to these problems with an accurate account of history and prophecy. Is America being ruled by secrecy? The answer is, not only is she being ruled by secrecy, but Lucifer is ruling the whole world by secrecy. To get a better understanding of what is going on, one must have knowledge and understanding of the holy, because it is Yahweh who chose a people to represent him in the earth and gave them all of the holy things needed to instruct mankind unto salvation. Most importantly, this is what it is all about. So there are a lot of people who understand the political aspect of Lucifer's plan, but because they cannot see Lucifer or the spiritual aspects of what's going on, they will lose every battle. Chiefly because the war they see is not a natural war, but a spiritual war. And because of this, man will try to stop or prevent something that is destined to happen by prophecy. So this is what usually happens. This group actually sees a certain part of the battle, but either choose to fight the battle the wrong way or try to fight a battle that was never meant to be won in the first place, therefore causing them to strive with the creator of all things. Long ago, Yahweh's angel told his servant Daniel about four empires that would rule his people and the world. By 30 BCE, all of these empires had come upon the earth and ruled over the children of Israel just as the angel stated. So what make man thinks that America would not be destroyed when this same God declared thousands of years ago? It would. So woe to the man that strives with his maker. Also, there was another group that is worse than the first. These are the religious groups who believe in their preachers more than they believe in God and their Bible. These groups of people are blind to the political arena of events that are happening today, mainly because they spend most of their time in church being entertained with fleshly things instead of being taught the word of God. As a result of this, they miss what the prophets had to say because they never had the spirit anyway. Hello. And welcome to the Watchman segment of our program. You know, when we look at the things that's really happening around the earth where America is, is involved, we find out that the reason why America is having so many problems is simply because uh, uh, look at the things that she's doing in all these other countries, especially countries that she call Middle Eastern and Third World countries. What she's doing is she's going in trying to re uh, 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 trying to change these people culture and give them uh, replace that culture with democracy. Well, let's understand one thing. The, a democracy is nothing but a broken down republic. And this is the longest democracy that has ever been set up on the face of the earth. But the important thing that we need to know is how we as a people, the children of the living God, are going to fare in these things. And what we might want, what you might want to do is get back in the scripture uh, 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 beginning at 606 B.C. Uh, well, even before that, even when Moses uh, brought our people out of Egypt, we will find out that all of the people that uh, had us in captivity were the most powerful nation upon the earth. But when we left out of there, when time of our deliverance came, those nations uh, uh, fell, especially when you deal with the four, the last four empires, the Babylonian Empire, the Media Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Holy Roman Empire, which fell in 476 AD. Now, when you, when you really look at what's going on, the Holy Roman Empire is being revived. But in order for her to be revived, America has to be destroyed because uh, the Holy Roman Empire is talking about uh, anointing one king that's going to rule the whole earth. And America is not going to give up her power to anyone. This is one of the reasons she's got to fall. The other reason she has to fall is so that Yahweh's holy people, the children of Israel, uh, can be delivered. But let me read some things to you that the prophet Daniel 
had to say pertaining to the, uh, this last uh, empire. Now, Daniel had had a dream and he saw things set up on the earth until the Messiah returned back to the earth. And uh, he didn't understand the dream. And the angel Gabriel was sent to him to interpret the dream for you. So let me read some of the things that were said. This is in Daniel chapter 7. And I'm going to start this at uh, verse uh, 16. 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the vision of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the thing. These great beasts which are four are four kings that shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. So the last empire that we see coming upon the earth, it was the saints, the children of the living God that was going to take this kingdom and uh, uh, possess it forever and ever. This is why we have to be delivered out of America, the daughter of Babylon, before she fall in order for us to uh, uh, be able to uh, 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 rule this empire. Now, let me finish this. Uh, it says, uh, verse 21, I beheld and the same horn, remember these horns of kings now, made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Well, how are they making war with us today? They're making war with us uh, uh, through uh, Christianity and through religion and it's an economic war that's being waged against our people but we have to understand one thing that Lucifer is the prince of this earth and he's using these nations uh, uh, to try to destroy uh, 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 our people uh, verse 22 verse 21 I blessed them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. We are the small nation uh, from the east that was just prophesied that's going to rise up and rule the earth be simply because of covenants that, Ab that, our fought, that Yahweh made with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth king kingdom upon the earth which shall be different from all the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it in pieces. Well we know that the Romans, these transplanted Euro Gentiles over here we know that they rule the earth until Rome fell in 476 and then they are uh, 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 they conquered after they had conquered the whole earth, Rome fell and they gave everybody a portion of the earth. But Yahweh's holy people, what they did with us was put us in captivity. Uh, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and dividing of time, which is three and a half years. Well, let's look at that. They admit that they changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. Then they turned around and gave us a lot of pagan holidays uh, 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 to deal with instead of... Uh, uh, keeping Yahweh's holy law that he said was going to be forever. When you get into the New Testament, Paul was keeping those things. Well, why is it that the people that he went to teach these things uh, uh, are not keeping these things? Simply because they are children of the adversary, the devil, and they are the strap that Yahweh used to punish us because of our fathers was not walking in his law. But this thing couldn't last forever. This captivity was only supposed to be 400 years. And right now, the things that's coming up on our people, and you haven't seen anything yet, the things that's coming up on our people, these things is what's devised to take away our sin, to make us see that something is wrong and turn to the, uh, the God of Israel. But as long as we hear in Miss Liberty, the land of the free, the home of the brave, and uh, don't consider ourselves to be captives, but freed men, then truly they shall destroy our people. But then Yahweh has always saved the remnant that will not go for these things. And these is the ones that he's that uh, that he's going to uh, uh, save. Verse uh, 26. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it and unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom 
under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So what we what what we can very well see is that not like Christians say that the Messiah can come any day because he can't. He can't come until certain prophecies are being fulfilled. And just like the Messiah told his people to watch, these are the things that we're beginning to watch and see come up on the earth as America loses the daughter of Babylon, loses her power and is destroyed by, by the beast and the false prophet. And things has gotten so bad with her currency today, you might as well, you might want to look on the, uh, 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 on the internet or either in the newspaper in the money market and see that Europe's currency has outvalued America's currency, and people, it's, they got people in this country here that are, that won't even take American dollars. They are taking euros because they that's the new world currency. And with the currency that America is talking about, uh, uh, the Amera dollar that they're thinking about putting up on the market, that ain't going to be worth a quarter either, simply because the beast has to be set up, this last empire that, that these Gentiles are setting up that's going to fight the Messiah uh, uh, when he returns uh, 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 to this earth. But let me read. Some. Now we read here that it said that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Well, that has to do with the war of Armageddon long after America has fallen. But let me go back a little further in the book of Daniel. I'm going back to Daniel. Uh, 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 I'm going to Daniel chapter 8. And read some things out of Daniel chapter 8 uh, about this thing that's going to uh, 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 take place. Now, Daniel, uh, the angel came to Daniel again and explained this dream to him again. What he saw in the beginning, he saw in the day vision. Now, his next vision was in the night vision. Now, it, it's, this one is in the night vision because the day vision uh, includes uh, the destruction of America. But the night vision, the night vision includes the destruction of the last kingdom that's going to be set up on the uh, 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 on the whole earth. Now, Daniel had saw this dream, but he really didn't understand it. And let's see what the angel Gabriel had to say to Daniel. This is in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me to know the interpretation of the thing. These great beasts which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take that kingdom and possess that kingdom forever and ever. Now here we go again, talking about the saints of the Most High shall take that kingdom. Well, let's go and look and uh, uh, see about that. See, what this has to happen is that Yahweh has to show his power upon the earth so that he can redeem his people out of captivity. Our 12 tribes has been either put in slavery or either colonized all over the earth. And we are the only people on the earth who do not uh, 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 rule over any part uh, of this earth. And this is why the Messiah is returning to set up his people to govern this earth as promised in the covenant that was made with our father. See, Yahweh is a covenant God. Remember that. Now, this is in Revelation chapter 19 when the Mashiach comes. It's uh, 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. I'm going to skip down uh, to uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 17. It says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war with the Messiah that sits on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which is talking about the Pope, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worship his image. These both was cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So you see, the organization they're sitting up now is the organization that's going to fight against the Messiah when he returns. And the reason why we're ignorant of these things is because our preachers in these in these 
uh, churches, they work for the adversary of the devil. So as the Messiah said, watch, none of them is watch, watching. But if you uh, uh, come to the Culture Center, we're located at 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia. All of these things will be answered. You'll be given insight into the scriptures so you can look at it with your own eyes and see the things that are coming upon the earth. But how can you learn except someone show you the, the truth to send these things? America's on her, her demise and the next thing to fall is the Holy Roman Empire. Then read Isaiah chapter 66 and, and uh, 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 Zechariah chapter 14 and see what's going to happen. Peace. Y'all will be with you all. Disagreeable.